Police in Missouri facing community backlash after a black woman says a white man held her captive for nearly a month. The 22 year old says she escaped from a room in the man's basement after he allegedly kidnapped her back in September. Timothy Haslett Jr is now behind bars facing rape, kidnapping and assault charges. The young woman says she was able to get away from Haslett when he left the house to take his child to school. The woman also told police there were other women. I'm quoting her words, other women, but so far police have found no evidence of that. Her amazing escape uh, comes weeks after community leaders say they warned authorities of a predator targeting black women in the Kansas City area. Joining me right now is Derica Wilson. She's the co-founder and CEO of Black and Missing Foundation Incorporated and is a former law enforcement officer. Derica, so good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. So what do you think about these allegations? What I think is that sadly law enforcement failed this community. The community was in an outcry asking for assistance in what allegedly was someone abducting you know, black women and girls in the Missouri area. And it really fell on deaf ears. The fact that it was unfounded, you know, it raised more questions because what type of investigation was conducted to even determine that it was unfounded? Um, was any missing person reports filed? I can't imagine that these women being missing for over a month and no one reported it to law enforcement because these are daughters. Mm -hmm. These are valuable members of the community. And I mean, to add to that, Kansas City Police, you know, initially, I understand, called the reports of a predator, uh, you know, targeting uh, women in the black community, as you say, as completely unfounded. And that's according to a statement published by the Kansas City Star newspaper. But people kept saying, no, something is going on. So typically, uh, how are reports like that investigated? How, you know, wh wh what are you, what are you saying based on accounts that you've heard from people, not necessarily in the Kansas City area, but other places about how their complaints are met, whether it be, you know, among law enforcement? Well, first and foremost, when they heard this outcry from the community, did they actually take a police report of this suspicious circumstance? Did they interview community members? Did they check their missing persons report? Again, it's so many questions that are raised because we all know that the first 24 to 48 hours are the most critical moments. And so you have the community members in an outcry that these women are going missing in this area and it really fell on deaf ears. Um, the fact that this brave young woman was able to escape and we have to give thanks to that vigilant community member that took her in. You know, how many more? But remember that was after she missing? actually, and reportedly that was after she went to one neighbor and reportedly that neighbor was like, I don't wanna get involved. I worry about my own life. She then had to run to yet another neighbor's house uh, before that person took her seriously, was able to then you know, assist her so that we could get to this point. Now there's an arrest and hopefully she's in a safe space. Absolutely, absolutely. But I, I just think at this point, there are so many unknowns. Um, mm -hmm. I really feel that an independent investigation needs to be conducted at this juncture. You know, Kansas City has their own issues right now. I mean, they're under investigation you know, from the federal government with hiring practices. But now we need the independent study on how these policies, how, how are they following these policies with missing person and some of their other, you know, policy and procedures within the department? And I mean, let, let's talk about the disparities here because we're talking about, you know, black people, you know, making up 30, 13% of the U.S. population, uh, yet, we're talking about black people comprising 34% of missing person cases in 2021. That's according to the FBI's National Crime Information Center. Explain, you know, what your organization is doing to help um, promote more attention uh, to cases involving uh, people of color who are missing, perhaps not reported missing, or perhaps the reports are not taken seriously enough. 
you know, sadly, you know, that's why the Black and Missing Foundation exists to sound the alarm, to apply pressure to law enforcement to dedicate more resources, you know, utilizing our media partners. And thank you, CNN, for using your platform to help us tell these stories. It is so critical because, again, time is of the essence. And actually, you know, persons of mm -hmm. color in, in the United States, 40% that are missing are persons of color in the black and brown community. Although we know that there are more because even with the Hispanic community, 25% identify as Afro-Latina, but they're, they're still classified as white. So we really need to break down these barriers that all these individuals that are going missing, they deserve to be found. We need law enforcement to stop labeling our children as runaways because of course, runaway does not meet the Amber Alert criteria. We need for them to stop associating our missing black and brown men um, and women as you know criminals because there's no sense of urgency in finding them is really desensitizing, dehumanizing the fact that these are valuable members of our community. Their mothers, their fathers, their sons, their daughters, brothers and sisters, and they deserve the same amount of resources. Race should not be a barrier to resources from law enforcement or the media. Mm, so many important points you just made. Uh, Derricka Wilson, thank you so much. Glad you could be with us today. Thank you for having me.